to everyone for joining us, you know, on your Tuesday morning, coming and attending this webinar with us. Um, I'm Tracy Nguyen, the Youth Engagement Project Coordinator at California School Based Health Alliance. Um, welcome to the Stanford Reach Labs Vaping Information Solutions and Interventions Toolkit, otherwise known as VISITS. This is the second and final webinar in our two-part series on resources on tobacco use as well as the vaping epidemic. The first one was on the Stanford Tobacco Prevention Toolkit, and if you missed that two weeks ago, we do have the recording on our website, so if you're interested in that, I can definitely put that and link it in the group chat as well. But let's go ahead and move along. Let's see, there we go. Um, first, we wanna thank our funder, the California Department of Education, Tobacco Use and Prevention Education Program um, for supporting this project and making this webinar possible. The content itself do not necessarily reflect the position or policy of the CDE. On, uh, going on to some housekeeping, um, this webinar will be recorded and the recordings of the the recordings of this webinar, as well as the slides, will be emailed to you, as well will be made available on our website. If you have any questions throughout this webinar, please um, put it in the group chat. And if it's relevant to um, the current slide that we're on or to the current um, live demonstration we will have, our presenters will answer them as we go. But for the most part, if it's not relevant to the current slide or to the current page that will be on for live demonstration, our presenters will um, answer them towards the end of the presentation. We do have time for that. So please don't worry, your questions will be answered. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, the California School Based Health Alliance is, we are a statewide nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the health and academic success of children and used by advancing health services in schools. So that means we advocate for more school-based health centers as well as um, support and improve existing ones. And the way we do this is through policy, capacity building, and technical assistance, such as the webinar we are providing with you uh, for you today. And if you're interested in learning more about us, um, there is our website right there on the slide deck um, where you can find recordings, slides, and as well as additional resources. If this is already uh, not already in your calendar, we want to put it on your radar. Uh, we will be hosting our conference in uh, San Bernardino at the University of Redlands on April 29th. So again, if this is of interest to you, please save it um, on your calendar. Right now, we're hoping for it to be in person, but things can change um, as we go through this pandemic together. Uh, but in conjunction with that, um, if you sign up to be a member, you do get exclusive benefits. And one of the benefits and perks is conference registration discount, as well as technical assistance tailored to your organizational needs. Um, again, if you're interested in this, we do have the link right there for you on the slide deck. Again, all information um, and resources will be shared to you via email, as well as on our website. Um, and with that, I would like to introduce our two presenters for today. Uh, first, we have here Dr. Marsha Zarilla. She's a public health specialist and director of positive use development of the Halpern Fulcher Lab in the Division of Adolescent Medicine, Department of Pediatrics at Stanford University since um, 2019. She is bilingual and bicultural master certified health education specialist with 25 years of clinical experience working in the adolescent health, use development, and school-based health care fields. She is the staff and mentor of the high school and college students who make up the Stanford Reach Lab Youth Action Board for the Tobacco Prevention Toolkit and Cannabis Awareness and Prevention Toolkit. Dr. Zarilla is involved in curriculum development and conducting trainings for educators, healthcare providers, parents, and youth advocates on the toolkits. We also have here Dr. Bonnie Halpern Felscher. She's a tenured professor in the Division of Adolescent Medicine. Department of Pediatrics at Stanford University. She is also the founder and executive director of the Tobacco Prevention Toolkit, the Cannabis Awareness and Prevention Toolkit, and the Vaping Information Solutions and Interventions Toolkit. Dr. Halpern Felscher is a developmental psychologist with additional training in adolescence and young adult health. Funded by the NIH and many foundations, her research has focused on understanding and reducing adolescent tobacco use, alcohol and marijuana use, and risky sexual behavior. Her research, including over 170 publications, committee, and advocacy work, have been instrumental in setting policy at the local, state, and national level. And with that, I would like to pass it on to Bonnie and Marsha to talk more about the toolkit. Let me go ahead and stop my screen share. 
Great. Thank you, Tracy. And hi, everyone. We've got a great turnout, over 80 people. So welcome. It's great to see you all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And what Marsha and I are going to do is kind of ping back and forth. Um, let me make sure that I am on the right. All right. Marsha, you're seeing the right one? Yes. All right, fantastic. So I, I don't think we need to introduce ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on because I wanna make sure that we have as much time for the content as possible. So I'm gonna do a quick overview that I will give very quick of the problem and solutions. Uh, this is usually an hour, hour and a half talk that I'm gonna do in about five minutes, uh, but I think it just sort of sets the stage. If you want more information about the overview of the problem around vaping, please ping uh, Marsha or me and we can and either uh, point you to other talks we've given or even come and give that talk. So we're gonna talk about two resources today, the Visit as well as Healthy Futures, which is part of our larger tobacco prevention toolkit. We'll make sure that we have lots of time for question and answer. Feel free to put it in the chat as we go. If it's um, something that makes sense to stop and answer, then we will. If not, we'll save it at the end. And then please play along with us. Follow along on your computers. We'll put in the links so you can see. We also have some activities. Uh, it, it just makes learning more interesting, more fun, and, and more effective. <clears throat> So as you hopefully know, if not, you will, we do in our lab have three toolkits, the tobacco and, and the cannabis aware, uh, prevention toolkits, and then visit that we're going to focus on mostly today. And there are the websites, and we'll drop those into the um, text as we go along. So I want to meet, have you meet the team? This is actually, our lab has exploded. We have much, many, many more members, but I, we're just pointing out the team members that are most relevant for your toolkits. So we've been fortunate to be a combination of academics, school-based curriculum folks, and of course, youth. So your main people here, as well as specifically the visit leadership. So within developing visit, in addition to Marsha and me, and then Richard and Adrian, who are co-directors of all three toolkits, we also were um, have been met and collaborating with Dr. Arash Anasharvani, who's an adolescent medicine doc, and Dr. Brad Zickerman, who's a psychiatrist. We have the Stanford Youth Action Board. Um, this is really Marsha's baby, but I'll, I'll brag on her behalf that uh, when Marsha came to our lab, started this Youth Action Board, we've got 20 youth involved, uh, high school and college age, uh, across the country, mostly California, but across the country. And they really inform everything that we do in the lab, our research, our curriculum, our prevention, our cessation, everything that we do. So huge importance there. Um, shout out to our funders, including California Department of Education. All right. So why are we concerned about this and talking about this today? And particularly, why are we talking not just about prevention, but with visit and with Healthy Futures? about helping young people who are already vaping or using tobacco products. You're probably familiar with this graph around the 2019 tobacco youth, uh, National Youth Tobacco Survey data, national data. This is where we really started saying, wait a second, great news, cigarettes are going down as evident by, evident by the left side of the graph. But what wasn't good and is not good is what we see on the right, which is a pretty sharp increase in the prevalence or use of electronic cigarettes or vaping devices over the past 10 years, and particularly a sharp increase in that 2017 to 2019 area. And we actually see in the 2017 to 2018, we saw a 78% increase in the number of high school students and a 48% increase in the number of middle school students who report having used an e-cigarette in the past 30 days. And in 2019, the, the prevalence went to about almost 28%. And I'll tell you, I've been doing this for a very long time. I go around to schools, used to be in person, now virtually, go around talking to youth, stu uh, to students, to parents, to communities, to educators. And a lot of people saying those rates are low. It's probably 30 to 50 to 60% of youth who are using these products. Now in 2020, we did see a slight decrease closer to 20%, so closer to our 2017 numbers. And that's, that's potential good news. It's still 20%, it's still one in five youth and over 3 million youth who are vaping. 2021, the numbers went even further down to 11% of high school students and almost 3% of middle school students. 
But really important to know that the 2021 data were collected during the pandemic and largely during still stay at home orders. So it was not in this academic year, it was the end of last academic year with a lot of youth staying at home. So we know vaping is a social event. And so it makes sense that we didn't have as many youth saying that they vaped. We now are seeing uptick again in some of those numbers now that students are back on campus. So there are many problems with vaping, but we're just going to focus for a minute on one aspect, which is the brain and addiction, because that's what brings us here today for why are we talking about this. So we know that the bot that when you're vaping and particularly nicotine rewires and changes the brain. So you're significantly more likely to become addicted when you start using any nicotine and to be honest, any addictive substance, THC too. But when you start under the age of 25 and particularly under the age of 21. So pop quiz for you really quickly, what percentage of adolescents who are addicted um, smokers do you think started when they were teens? Why don't you pop that in the chat? <clears throat> Beautiful. Thanks for playing along. All right. So a lot of you got it. It's about 90%. About 90% of youth, of adults who are addicted, say that they started under the age of 21 and many under the age of 18. Oh, shoot. What just happened? So let's say you have to read an incredibly long email from your boss that you have that to finish so before the Hang on. Sorry about that. In 10 minutes. Mm. Or you're cramming for an exam Somehow the night I before, clearly kicked but on can't something. bear to keep your eyes open. Oh, you know what I did? I clicked on the why wait video somehow, Marsha. That's so weird. I don't know how I did that. All right, are we the back? That was strange. Um, that was another video that we'd love you to see at some point. I don't know how I got to that. Uh, I don't even have that up. So anyway, so when we look at the pandemic, we're definitely seeing that a lot of teens are addicted and a lot of teens are either quitting or trying to quit during this COVID-19 pandemic. And the reason why I say this, and you're welcome to any of the data sources we have, just email us. Um, but the reason why I say this is it's clear that we have a lot of youth who are addicted and a lot of youth who are admitting that and trying to quit. Our data show it and other data show it as well. So that brings us to what can you do? So we do have our visit website and Marsha is gonna go through that in detail live, but let me just talk about why we created visit and some of the goals. So it sounds like a lot of you may have been um, on the, the webinar in which we were talking about the tobacco prevention toolkit. What happened is when we started um, and that launched in 2016. We've reached over 2 million youth through that toolkit. When we started going around training on it and talking on it, we found that I was getting a lot of emails from healthcare providers, school-based, um, community-based, clinic-based, uh, hospital-based, university-based, whatever, basically saying, this is great, but I don't have an hour to talk to youth in my class, I have 30 seconds or I have a minute or five minutes. Can you to basically do the best of the best of, from the tobacco prevention toolkit and create it in a way that it makes more sense for healthcare providers broadly defined? So that's what we did. So VISIT really is for adolescent and young adult healthcare providers to really provide you with the most up-to-date and relevant information on vaping provide youth-friendly printouts for it, and then particularly focused on screening, counseling, and supporting young people who are using any e-cigarette product. So that's where it goes um, and, and the most of the focus is. And then easy to share resources for the young people and for their families as well. So that slide always screws up. It is, Visit is based and all of our toolkits are based on state-of-the-art research that we've conducted in our lab and others have conducted. It's based on um, um, focus groups. Some of you may have been part of that, talking to healthcare providers, talking to youth, talking to parents, talking to educators, and based on best ways to prevent screen counsel young people. So we do have all of that on the toolkit on visit. We also have information on motivational interviewing and confidential care. So if you've done that and you know it, great. But if you don't or you're newer to those concepts, 
we have videos and resources and information, and a lot more is coming by the way. We actually are in the process of, oh, soon we'll be remodeling and redoing a lot of visit. Um, what's there is great. I think it's gonna continue to grow and become even better. So there are three parts, the essentials, the clinical encounter, and then further resources. And again, Marsha will go through all this. So I'm gonna start, stop sharing and hand it over to Marsha. Hi, everybody. Glad that you're here. I'm going to put the link in so that you have it to the visit. And what I'd like for you all to do is to kind of follow, follow with me as we, um, as we navigate. The navigation is something that's so important because as somebody told me at a training, if I don't know how to navigate, I'm not gonna use it. So let's um, do that. So here is when you click in, here's your kind of like the home page. And here are the three components of the visit. And it's also up here. But before I do that, I'm gonna just show you this um, tab right here. And this is just a, an about tab about the, the development of the, uh, the toolkit, some background, the goals and you know, the founders and the funders. So when you wanna go back to the home page, just go up here. Don't go here. Um, that'll take you to Stanford Medicine rabbit hole and it'll be really difficult to get back. So just always remember to go to the right. And so, so we're here now. So you can either go here where the three images are or you can go up here. So it kind of depends on your preference. So I will go to the, the three components down here. So let's do the essential. So let's, let me show you what that looks like. So when you click on the essential, so you see that it's um, kind of like a reddish color. So you know that that's where you're at. And so the, even within that, there's six parts. The thing that we did with this is that in this part that we're providing a, a quick overview. So this is for, um, providers that might be brand new to this or want a little bit more up-to-date information. Everything here is, um, we give you how much time, so you know exactly how much time you are going to be spending reading these um, different components. And the thing with this, you either have the option of scrolling all the way down to read everything about vaping, or if you already know certain parts of it, you can just um, click around. But let me show you this one first. So here, is um, definition of vaping. And then even within the text, you'll see that there's some plus signs here. So these are like drop downs. So there's even more information. And then one of the things here that I want to show you that here's a, a drop down of all the different uh, references that, that are out there. So that if you really wanted to do a, a deeper dive, you could definitely do that. Okay. So you could go back to the page up here. So I'm going to do one more so that I could show you. So here, uh, so why do you start vaping? So a lot of this, um, as you can see, there are a lot of infographics. So really brief, um, very colorful. Again, we have a lot of drop downs so that you can um, get more information from these um, different topics. So that is the one that has to do with the essential. Actually, let me show you this one here about looking more into the issue. This one, I definitely wanted to show you this. So this one here gives you like an overview of all the different um, vapes and the different, the, 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 um, you get to see like the evolution of all the different vapes that um, are there. Here to the right, in addition to here being with the nicotine, these are other types of vapes that youth might be using. So again, so you're familiar with them. So there, it's very visual. Here we talk about the um, environmental impacts. As you can see also, you could download these fact sheets. So you could give these to um, your clients or you could also print them and put them up in um, your clinic. So again, we have ways for you to get to different parts of this particular um, section. So there's a, there's a lot um, here that's an overview. The, the one that I wanted to really spend a lot of time on is on uh, the clinical encounter because uh, there's a lot of information here. And again, you have options of either going over here and clicking and you could see the different options or you could go down here. And so what you're doing here is uh, it's, uh, 
kind of like, well, what do I need to do before, during, and after an encounter when I'm with a youth? So let's go to what do I ask? So right before. So when you look at this here, what you're doing is um, you're getting, uh, you're preparing for that encounter. So what's that gonna look like? What kind of questions am I gonna ask? Are they going to be filling out a questionnaire? So we're kind of helping guide you through that. And also what well, is the terminology? So we might use the word e-cigarettes, you know, but they're gonna be using other terminology. They're gonna be using vapes. Um, so kind of learning what, a, what is it that the, the youth are using in terms of um, their terminology um, and even being very specific too about what types of products that they're using. And of course, when they, with every encounter that we do with a, with, a, with a youth, you know, having worked in a school-based health center myself, you, you talk about the limits of confidentiality, talk about, um, my, you know, you're aware of what's uh, minor consent. If you're in California, you know what the laws are. If you're out of state, you might want to look at what the, the law is in your, um, your uh, state. So we have resources down here to show you that. Again, how much time does, does it take to read that article? So all here for you. So we're, we do a lot of linking with a lot of um, other resources that are out there that um, are adolescent um, and youth um, friendly. And then when it's, so the screening for, um, for vape use is right here. Again, very uh, infographic, something really simple. Where did we get it from? For the screening part, we have a lot of tools for you to consider. So there's a lot of different, and I know that clinics might have different screening tools. Uh, so we have um, the ones that are, that we uh, are using or are using at Stanford and also school-based health centers are using as well. Uh, they're all here for you. And again, if you click, you could see uh, all these different links. What are the ones that are, uh, self-administered um, by the youth or which are the ones that the provider is doing. So that is um, down here. The piece that um, Bonnie was talking about, the motivational interviewing, everything, not everything, but a good um, overview of, of MI is right here. So there's um, websites, um, all sorts of things to help you in um, to get better at um, motivational interviewing. So I'll just get out of that. And then here is a, a table of all the different screening tools that we have. So we organize it for you so that it's about vapes, tobacco, cannabis, other drugs. Is it printable? Is it digital? Is it something that the patient is going to administer, the clinician and other languages that are available? Okay, so that's um, for that section. So then now we're gonna go to the how do I ask? So for here, there's um, there's four different um, components to that. So preparing and engaging, um, and then working with the not only with the uh, the youth but the the family, and then what type of follow up. So as we mentioned, when we talk about motivational interviewing, and here is a, a really nice infographic that you could have. Where did we get it from? And then here is um, kind of like the tips on how to talk to youth about vaping using the correct uh, terminology again, and also not to be judgmental. So we talk a lot about that when we do the, uh, the healthy futures, um, just that we want to approach youth when we talk about this um, as a conversation and not a confrontation. We don't want to have an argument with them. So this will, will help you as you do your clinical encounter. So even before you want to do, as I mentioned before, you want to do the, uh, clini the clinical encounter is to talk about the one as a confidentiality. And then um, what you also want to do is um, kind of start engaging the youth with a, a little bit of motivational interviewing. And like we said earlier, what we're trying to do is that we're, we're trying to kind of like set the tone and set the, the stage and being very empathetic, very um, supportive with the young person and really avoiding any type of um, arguments. We have a video included here. Again, tells you how much time. So we have um, a lot of other resources that's within the, the toolkit that will help you with the, uh, the motivational interviewing. 
So then we are here ready to do our encounter, okay? And so how do you engage them? So always thanking them for being there, you know, um, as follow up on some questions that you filled out in the, uh, the questionnaire that you did, would it be okay if we discuss this? And then really, again, setting the stage for behavior change. So when they tell you that they are using vapes, well, then we kind of go with this um, set where well, uh, is this something that, um, what's, what's, a, what's good about use vaping? And then sort of like the flip side, well, what's not so good about vaping? And maybe they be able to say, well, not, vaping is really not great for me because um, it's, it's uh, making me cough too much. So kind of doing that, um, a lot of listening, right? So you're doing a lot of listening and summarizing with um, whatever the, the young person is saying. And asking them really like, where do they wanna go from here in terms of that clinical encounter? And then when um, you have, it might be that you might have some parents in the waiting room. So before you bring in the parent, you always wanna ask the youth, um, well, we're gonna to talk to your parents about a lot of different things. And when it comes to this, what would you like me to share? Like would it would be okay to share um, or not share? And then being really positive with the parent, especially when, it's, when that um, disclosure happens in terms of vaping. And so we have um, here another uh, resource that you could print out and you could also read as well to give to the, to the family. And you know, we have this here for you to always be like a guide so that um, you don't feel like, um, oh, I have to go back to another page to find out more about motivational interviewing. So we have everything there. It's all ready for you. And we have a lot of resources for parents too as well. So the little icons here provides you with the link. So you have that for all of those. And then um, we have here is the follow-up. So the encounter is over. So what do I do? So when you have your follow-up appointment with them, you could either do another screening or you could ask them, well, how did it go? How, how was that? Um, how was your plan? How did it go talking with your family about it? Uh, just kind of getting an idea of like where, where they're at right now with their um, use. So again, using MI to engage. And if they're still at the stage where they're like, no, oh, I don't think I really want to do anything about it. This, the scale is really great. Um, I find that really effective. Uh, it really does give you a sense of where they're at in terms of how important an issue is or how they feel about stopping. So I, I really like using scales, personally speaking. And then if they're contemplative, it's like, well, what are types of questions do you have for me? Um, are you interested in making a change? So all of these are here ready for you. These are all scripts, easy, that you could kind of start implementing in your own practice. And then this one here where you're preparing to make a change, if they are ready to set up a quick date or a plan, these are a series of questions that you can ask them. Um, is it okay to go through this? And so what are the changes that you wanna make? What are, why are these important for you? What are the steps that you need to do? Who's supportive? But also, this part here, how will you know that your plan is working and what are the barriers? So really identifying with them, what are the barriers and what are the kind of like the counter barriers? What are things that they can do to upset that, um, that barrier? So there's a, a lot of, um, like I said, a lot of conversation, but a lot of listening. So these are some potential um, interventions that you can do uh, depending on your site. So uh, with nicotine addiction, uh, we know that willpower is not the, is, is not effective. That's not the, you need more than that. And uh, the nicotine replacement therapy does increase the success of quitting and counseling as well. So some for, for minors, some doctors are already um, prescribing these. So it, would depend on your practice. And then in terms of cannabis use, there is um, really no medication for cannabis use disorder. And so using uh, behavioral therapy uh, is the most effective. We have other sources that I'll show you as well um, in terms of um, cannabis use disorder. 
So there's all these different tabs here. So let's go, let's continue with the, with the next one. So, so we talk about positive reinforcement. So one of the things about, especially this slide here, when it comes to cannabis is, is really helping the youth understand how, is, um, how cannabis uh, impacts um, the brain, but also kind of giving them that kind of like stepping back a little bit. So if they are not using, really encouraging them not to start and wait till their brain is um, finished developing, but if they are using to at least consider stopping until their brain is done developing or even reducing. And this is a, a, a script that you can use here. And this is actually part of our cannabis um, a curriculum that we use for our students. And also, in, again, having that opportunity to have that trusted adult with, um, with the young person and um, what are some of the things that we can do um, as a family. So this is the same, the same um, visual that we saw earlier. So a lot of it does, um, not a lot of it, but some of it um, is relevant in different parts of the toolkit. So we repeated that for you. The motiv I'm going to show you the motivational interviewing is really where there's a lot of good information about motivational interviewing. So we did see this earlier, but if you look down here, it talks about the different stages. So if you're unclear or this is new, it's like, okay, what does that mean? And so these are the kind of questions that you would be asking if they're still thinking about it or if they're kind of at a higher level of in their thinking about it. And then if they're like, you know, they're ready to make that change. So these are the kinds of questions. So it's all lined up there for you. In terms of the, the therapeutic interventions, we have um, several options. So for outpatient um, care, we talk about um, what this is being the first step. So seeing your primary provider. So they're always gonna go there first. And then who are other partners that you can seek? So it would be uh, psychiatrists or, or other therapists. And then here is um, so more um, intensive um, uh, care, um, outpatient programming. We have a lot of different um, quit lines here. Uh, most of it is for tobacco, nicotine. And then here, in terms of medication management, you could click here and it will go back to um, smoking cessation through the um, adolescent um, working group um, manual. Here, talk about uh, what are some symptoms of nicotine withdrawal. You could also download it as well. Medication management. So this is what I was talking about earlier. What is it that we can do for cannabis use disorder? So these are, um, so these are, what you're treating are the symptoms, right? You're treating the, the symptom of insomnia, withdrawal. So these are some medications that have helped. And so uh, it's an option to, um, to do more research and to um, suggest um, to your clients. Here are, again, some of the different um, withdrawal symptoms. And what are the, the effective ways of quitting? So we already talked about um, therapy, CB, um, CBT especially. And if you wanna read more about it, you just go back here. So it's, oh, I don't know if I was supposed to do that. But we'll have to look, at, we'll have to look into that. Okay, uh, let's see, medication management. Okay, yeah, or, okay, we did that, yeah. Okay, sorry. And then um, other psychotherapies. Uh, so we, we have um, three areas here. So one is a residential treatment center, the, a wilderness um, therapy, and therapeutic boarding schools. And then there's uh, other resources as well. The, um, the ones here for um, group treatment, even though there's not a lot of youth may use it, um, and we do have to recognize that not too many will. It's still an option out there. Somebody uh, might be interested in doing these. And so these are all different options um, that are out there as well. So a, lot of, a lot of options, but also a lot of um, research need 
needed to be done um, by the families and, and maybe that's a, something else that um, you, know, you can help the families with as well. And then when we look at printable materials, we have a, a lot. So there's a materials for our patients. These are materials that you could give to the families. Um, and they're all on different topics within um, vaping. And there's on clinic posters as well. A lot of fact sheets as well and for you. And then the last one, it has to do with uh, further resources. So we um, provide the latest data. So this is um, kind of like what Bonnie was um, talking about earlier, but all, where are all the links to tell you um, what's going on with cannabis today. So this is something that um, we're keeping up to date. And we have here um, the health effects of vaping, so different um, parts of the body. Again, all tons of resources. So whatever it is that you're looking for, all you have to do is click and then there it is. So everything that you need is right here. And we have the, let me go back up, sorry. Don't, don't mean to make you dizzy. Uh, so we talk about the social effects as well. So campaigns that are out there and the um, baby cessation, the symptoms again. And I wanna show you this um, part of it anyway. Uh, so what are some alternatives that um, people can do? So uh, the Youth Action Board created a video and I'm not gonna be able to play it um, because of, of my audio, but um, this is something that you could um, put in the exam room or in the waiting room rather. Um, so it's about um, you know nine minute video. And what they did is um, during the pandemic, the, the, there were 12 students that started the, the Youth Action Board. Anyway, they created uh, a video on their own personal ways of coping. And so it's uh, super youth friendly and it, it's just um, a great way to give um, people I, you know, ideas for alternatives to, um, to vaping. And then finally, again, a lot of detail about working with youth, confidentiality, minor consent. So a lot of this you already saw when um, we were like in a different section. So that is the visit toolkit. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to, so I'm gonna stop sharing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play like a little game. So you're still on the Visit um, Toolkit website. And so we're gonna play kind of like a little scavenger hunt. So see how things are looking for you as you play this game. So, so if you look at the first one, all right, so try to find that, um, section where it says youth are exposed to e-cigarette advertisements from multiple sources. What is three time? Thank you for the link. So I'll give you just a few moments to find it. If you, when you find it, please um, put it in the chat, say yes. So. We already have one hand raised. I believe that's someone confirming that they found it. Nice, excellent. So I'm gonna put it in the, the chat. This is where you'll find it. Excellent. Okay, the fact sheet on environmental impact. Okay, where's that? Did you find it? Okay, so I'll put it in the... Sorry, my fault. I hit the wrong button. That's okay. The one on environmental impact. So I'll just put it there. So that's in the uh, essentials. Okay. All right. Uh, the craft interview. 
uh, screening tool. Where would you find that? Did you find it? We have someone who raised a hand, so definitely one person. Nice, okay, great. And um, I just put the link there. And actually the screening tool is located in that same link. So um, two for one there. Okay, then the last one, the tips for managing stress and anxiety poster. Where do you uh, find that? Oh, that was super quick. We already have someone who raised their hand. Excellent, great. So I'll put that in the link as well. Yeah, perfect. Very nice. Cool. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Great. Um, and definitely, you know, we're always looking for ways of improving and making it easier. Or if you have other ideas of us adding, please let us know. Okay. So now we're going to talk about. Um, oh, so we're going to. So Bonnie's going to share her screen and we're going to do um, the next segment is um, the healthy futures. And I'll be talking about that. So thanks for playing everybody. Are you seeing it? Uh, I see the scavenger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, good. okay. So, so the, um, the way to access the healthy future is through the uh, tobacco um, toolkit uh, prevention toolkit link. Uh, so Let's, um, so I'll put that in right now for you all. Okay, uh, so the next slide will show you just, so we're gonna do is just a kind of like a brief overview of this. This actually is a separate training altogether. Um, and you're all, of course, welcome to take the training. So this is um, our alternative to suspension curriculum. And uh, so the next slide, it'll show you, um, talk a little bit more about like what what do we mean by alternative to suspension? So basically for students that um, have been caught vaping and it, we're educating them and moving them towards quit. So our alternative, our healthy futures is not only for students that are um, caught vaping, but also for students that want to address their own vaping um, on their own. So um, kind of does both. So we'll, I, I'm, the one that we're gonna show you today is the, the latest. And this I think would be very applicable, especially in a school-based health center setting. Uh, next slide. So this again was developed by us. Uh, so we have several versions. So the, the one hour is, is the brand new one that's self-paced and that's the one that I'm gonna show you. The two and the four is more for a group setting. So for example, I would be thinking of doing the two hour if I was doing a, like a lunchtime group, break it up a little bit. And then the four hour is for Saturday school. So we have on um, some schools that are, um, need a longer period of time with their youth. And so that's when they do it. Uh, so uh, the bulk of the healthy future that really talks about the different um, health problems associated and everybody gets to create their own individual plan. And there's a lot of resources as well. And, and as typical with all of our curriculum, that it's all um, evidence informed. The next slide will show you the kind of like a little comparison. So the one hour actually has, it's no longer the informational slides because we now, um, it's a Canvas course. So uh, I'll show you that in a second, but everything that you see there is um, pretty much the same through. There is a pre-assessment embedded in the, uh, the one hour. Uh, there is a where you're at, you have content, and then there's a checkout process. The two and the four are available online and it's free and downloadable and typically it's um the same in terms of everything except for the deep discussions that take place in the the four hour um, but the the material in the two and the four are exactly the same uh, next slide please so this is um our brand new course um it's just i'm gonna give you like a a glimpse of um, the, uh, the, the uh, web page. Uh, this is um, actually sitting uh, on uh, the Stanford um, Educational Technology 
uh, website, so it's not on our, our website. Uh, so it's a Canvas course, like I was mentioning. Uh, next slide, please. And, and I want to show you a little bit of what this is. A, um, a, a little feature of this um, particular um, curriculum is that there is a, ch a choose your adventure. And what this means is that you have three characters and then the, the youth gets to pick one character that they really identify with. And they get to follow their adventure um, as a way to help them with um, quitting smoking. Um, sorry, uh, e e uh, vaping. The, uh, the, youth the, the youth action board over the summer developed a lot of the content for this particular part. Um, so we're really excited about that. And over um, to the left, you'll see the different um, components. So we have um, three modules. This one is um, falling on what's their motivation. And then we also include a, um, a quit, um, an optional quit plan. The next slide will show you all, something that's also new that for us is um, a section that's on stress. And so this was also developed with the, uh, the Youth Action Board over the summer. So we're really super excited about having this um, stress, coping, healing, um, component within our curriculum. Uh, next slide, please. I think that might be it. So, okay, so now I'm going to go to the share screen again, and I'm going to show you where to access the healthy futures. And Marcia, just a time check, it's uh, 1147. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so this is just a little, it's a little glimpse because like I said, this is a larger training, but I think that the one that would be um, the easiest to do, especially kind of like on a one-on-one -on -one would be the new, um, the new course. So if you go to the, we, went, we already got to the toolkit right here. If you scroll down, it's right here. It's called My Healthy Future. And then here's, um, here's the course. Well, not the course, but it is information about the course. Where to find the course would be right here. So the youth would need to register. So I'm already registered, um, but this is what they would have to do. And then um, once they do that, they're in the course, and they can um, they could take it, and it's free. And there's um, they get a certificate of completion. So the way I um, I would imagine doing something like this is if you're seeing a youth in school or in your, um, you're waiting uh, in your clinical setting, in your clinic office, is um, that you have a discussion about they being, they're interested in quitting, have them do the course. They could take it, they could do it at home. They could do it in a, in a different setting in your office. I, it kind of depends on, on how your place is structured. And then you would come back and talk to them about it. And there's a part um, where the adult does some kind of follow-up with them as well. But because, especially if you're seeing youth on a regular basis, like if this is a, a client that you see on a regular basis, this would be a, a really good um, a way to start that program. The um, other thing too, I was gonna say, the it would be a little different if it was more of a, where the, the youth got caught vaping at, at school. So it's, you can still give them the, the one hour, but in terms of the follow-up, it, it would probably be a different person that would do the, the follow-up. And generally the, the ones that have been caught vaping and they have to take this course if it's an alternative to suspension, they're not probably really too happy to be doing this course. So um, I'm just, in that, just envisioning like what the, how the follow-up would be for somebody that took a course that didn't really wanna take a course. Um, but if you're doing this course with a youth that is, is in your, kind of like in your regular caseload, it would be, I think, a lot easier to do. Over here, if you wanted to preview um, the different modules right here, it gives you a really nice brief description of all of the different um, adventures that the, the youth will be doing. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So. We have about 10 minutes of questions and answers. Yeah, Marcia, I think I've um, been able to keep up and answer most of the questions and drop in the link. I, you know, I think Tina and, and you kind of mentioned this, but the question about um, following up, I think 
you and I and the, the team would really encourage as much as possible for people, for counselors, educators, whatever, whether you're doing after school detentions, um, uh, Saturday school, whatever, that, you know, it is not, ideally, it's not just give it to the student who's caught and being, you know, I'm done, but that there's some follow-up, some counseling, some further follow-up. Um, but the idea is, regardless of whether you only do that, that My Healthy Futures sort of self-paced online or whether you would do it as part of the other components of my healthy of healthy futures we really encourage that human interaction i don't know if you want to say more on that marcia because that was sort of your thinking and baby on this but i want to make sure we answered that yeah definitely you definitely need that follow-up and really check in you could also provide things could have changed by the time they took the course you know it might be that they're ready more ready to quit they need more resources and so having resources available to give to the youth as well um, other types of referrals so yeah yeah our goal i mean certainly you can use it as a check the box we did good but we're really hoping that there, there's a there's, uh, there's more to yeah there'll, there'll yeah. be more to that <laughs> yeah other questions um oh thank you Tracy, are, are there resources for parents in Spanish? Um, okay, um, yes, I, I don't know, Marcia, if you wanna, it, not the My Healthy Futures, and at some point we'll probably convert that over to a Spanish component. Um, it's a you know matter of funding um, to be able to do that, but the there are uh, one hour versions and a lot of the fact sheets that are on the tobacco prevention toolkit that are translated into Spanish, Chinese, and we're working on other languages. Um, so that's there for you. Um, Marcia, the parent letter though is translated, right? Yeah, the, about to... yeah the, the parent letter is translated. Do you want to share that? You probably can find it faster than I. Okay. Then um, I was about, so I was going to actually share the, the Spanish, um, lesson yeah the e-cigarette there's a this is spanish curriculum so here are all the spanish um uh, fact sheets and then for the the healthy futures oh, let's do it over here it's um i'll show you. so here is the parent letter so right here so you could download that yeah. and get to the parent <clears throat> um I'm sure you're thinking in your head, some of you, what about the rest? Like I said, we want to, um, we, we, we hear your thoughts. Uh, it's just a matter of bandwidth and funding um, to be able to get that done, but, but we're hoping, but at least you can use the, um, within the regular part of the toolkit, some of that information that it has been translated. Um, for the marijuana or the cannabis, oh, go ahead, Marcia. Oh, sorry, yes, I want also to show that we also have um, the le one lesson in, um, Simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese um, as well. So just yeah. wanted to share that. So that's under the tool, the, the tobacco prevention toolkit uh, curriculum decision maker and it's under language. So right here. So I'll put it in the thank I'll you. Just put it in the right there for you all. We also have Vietnamese coming. Um, I have a postdoc who's from Vietnam and her, she has people translating in, believe it or not, Polish potentially, um, just, you know, people who want to use the toolkit and translating in terms of the marijuana vaping cessation, um, there's not, well, there's nothing research validated for any cessation for anybody under 18 period. Um, unfortunately for nicotine or cannabis there's not a lot of cessation support out there for marijuana. Um, you, there are resources specifically through California Department of Education, or if you can go to your local departments of education, or excuse me, departments of health. And then there are docs. And in fact, if you have somebody specifically in mind, um, we, uh, Brad Zickerman, the psychiatrist, is an addiction medicine doc, and he does help and work with young people who are trying to stop using all kinds of, of substances. But there's, Marcia, tell me if I'm wrong, I don't know of any mass um, curriculum or cessation for cannabis, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I don't either. No. People are working on it, but it's slow going and, uh, you know, it's just hard. Great questions, everyone. Any other questions? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.
And like I noted earlier, in case you're not following the chat, you know, uh, My Healthy Futures is brand new. Healthy Futures has been there for a year or two. I guess I can't keep track with the pandemic. Um, My Healthy Futures is really brand new. Visit is um, almost a year old, but not, not um, uh, disseminated as widely, just again, bandwidth. So we, as I said in the chat, we are a community group. We want your feedback. I always say a broken link, something that's an error, wrong, inaccurate, we fix within 24 hours, you know, unless it's a weekend or a holiday, something that is a wish list, we um, we may not be able to do, so, well, we definitely can't do as quickly, but we listen to it. And a lot of things like, you know, our discussion guides, they were full of ink. They were too, they were, um, where schools were telling us it was too difficult to print. It was costing too much money. We changed it. We put it black and white and fewer pictures. So less ink. Um, you know, we listened to you. Things were PDFs. You wanted word, vice versa. So we try to make things really um, friendly for you. Um, so we really do see this as community pro property, community based. Um, like I said, all we ask is that you keep our name on, not us. You don't need to mention Bonnie. You don't need to mention Marsha. None of us. Um, reach Labs or the toolkits, names and links are what we ask because that just keeps us going. Um, but tell tell us how we can be a resource for you. Awesome. So if you have any last question, um, please put in a chat. Oh, I see one right here for me specifically. How can we benefit by becoming a member? Well, um, we do give out conference registration discounts. So if you're interested in that, our conference, we have lots of workshops that could be of interest to you. It's really to like the public health field, a school-based health center field. Um, so there is that. There's also technical assistance that we provide um, that is tailored specifically to your organizational needs. So you can just tell us that as well, and we'll do our best to support you in any way that we can. So those are like the main benefits uh, to becoming a member of the California School-Based Health Alliance or CSHA. Um, and while I am talking, I also want to share um, just the last slide right here. These are our emails. As you can see, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions at all. Um, and also, I want to put on your radar that we do have any evaluations that will pop up once I end this Zoom webinar meeting. Um, it's only five multiple choice questions. Please fill it out. That would really help us um, see where we can improve our webinars, our trainings, and provide um, us with the feedback that you would like. Um, if you have any other questions, please put it in the chat. Um, would this be uploaded to? Yes, this webinar recording will be uploaded uh, once we are able to edit it a little bit. But otherwise, in that, it should also be emailed to all attendees today as well as registrants. Tracy, may I mention, I meant to do a slide and I forgot, I'm breaking my own lab rule. Um, we do have a cannabis conference coming up um, the end of April, April 27th, 28th. I think it overlaps with your conference, but for our conference, it's being recorded. So if you register, you'll be able to have access to everything for an entire year. So shoot me an email um, and I can get you that info, the, the flyer and the registration info. It's $125. Um, it's the only thing that we charge for in our lab because that allows everything else to remain main free. Um, so feel, you know, let us know, but it's two half days of just slam pack tons of information on cannabis and tobacco and the, the, the intersection of those two. Thank you. Cool. And with that, there's no other questions. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you found this webinar helpful. Remember, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Take care, everyone. And with that, we will end our meeting. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.